Vice President of the Board, Elias Smith, Secretary for the Board. Michael Poole, School Board Treasurer. Nathaniel Lewis, Board Trustee. Betty Rex, the Board Trustee. Rance Wayne, Board Trustee. Wanda Cook Robinson, Superintendent. Shereen Barker, Director of Finance. David Turner, Associate Superintendent for Human Resources and Labor Relations. And with us tonight, we have uh, on the audio, Ms. Precious Williams, and in the back, we have uh, Chuck Cass on the uh, video. Uh, tonight, we have the uh, pleasure of introducing our new student rep. This year, we've done uh, something different in the fact that we have, uh, in addition to our two comprehensive high schools, uh, Southfield High and Southfield Lakers, we also have student representation now from uh, Southfield Regional Academic Campus as well as from uh, the University High School Academy. So I'm going to call each of the students up uh, to introduce themselves and uh, if everybody please welcome them as they uh, take on this new responsibility. First we have Mr. Earl Vines from Southfield Regional Academic Campus.
parent-teacher conferences will be next Wednesday and Thursday, October 17th and 18th. So this year, we have um, new clubs that are involved at our school, and we have Green Club, our Walking and Running Club, Art Club, United for Christ, Young Ladies, and also our Book Club is Back by Demand. Um, our 8th grade open house will be November 1st from 6.30 to 8 p.m., and our application window will be open from October 29th to November 17th, which is located on our UHSA website. Also, our counselor, Mr. Patton, has had one-on-one -on -one meetings, and it's still ongoing, with each of our seniors, um, where we will have all of our college apps completed by our early application deadline, November 1st. Thank you.
Congratulations to Ms. Kovar for being recognized for her leadership skills. Thank you so very much. It is an uh, honor and I humbly accept um, not just from the Southfield Public School District, but from my place of employment for over 26 years. So this is a grand honor. Um, being the president of Southfield Optimist um, is not something that I sought after, <laughs> but I wanted to do something more in the community. And as Dr. Cook just said, it takes a village. And I wanted to be part of that village. Um, my daughter is now 21 years old, um, and I knew that as a community leader, my job was not finished. So I continue to try to bring out the best in children based on the model of the Southfield Lake of Optimists. And I ask that you join in helping to bring out the best in children. So again, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, well that concludes our uh, student staff recognitions, and now we turn it over to the superintendent for the report of the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me begin by sharing that our chief financial officer, Debbie Trent, is not with us this evening. She's attending a conference on operations and facilities, and in her absence, we have our director of finance, Ms. Shereen Barker, who will be sitting in, and we welcome her this evening. <coughs> you know, We've been hearing a lot about the fantastic things that have been going on in the district. But the thing that you may not know is that many of our alumni are bringing these wonderful ideas, these programs, and often big, big surprises to us. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we will be at Southfield Lathrop High School, where one of our alumni of Southfield Lathrop will be christening our new greenhouse. This alumni provided financial support to restore the greenhouse for all of the children in the district so that we could do science and their stuff. In fact, if you go over there, you can even buy tomatoes and pills. <laughs> so we are very, very pleased uh, to have that happen. And I welcome all of you to come to South LA tomorrow and be a part of that grand opening. Also this evening, we have an alumni that has come back to us. And she is working with Levy High School. I'm going to ask Ms. Rita T. I'm sorry, Levy Middle School. I just promoted it. <laughs> um, to go to the podium. And I'm going to invite Don Johnson Stevens, who is a Southfield High alumnus, to come up and present the program that she wrote a grant for and brought it back home. And I want to say thank you very much. Oh, Don. 
with our young ladies on Tuesdays and Thursdays after school. Um, no charge. Just out of love and care and concern. And she's not just working with Levy, she's also working with two other school districts with the same program. So I'd like to present to you Don Johnson Stevens.
that you can help. We're always looking for people to volunteer their time, their talents, their treasures, serve in capacities where they can use their skills to better uh, educate and help our program be enhanced for the students. You can always refer a student. We do both school-based programs and community-based programs. So we do a, a lot of different things. Some of the things you're not going to see on this is that we actually have a family component as well. But if you want to visit our website, it's uh, solidfoundationonline.org. Feel free to inbox us, somebody. We'll get back with you. But I just want to say thank you to the board, to the school board. Thank you to Ms. Teague. Thank you to Ms. Dr. Wanda Cook-Robinson for allowing us to come and just give. It wasn't about us taking, but just coming to, for us to give from our experience. And we would like to thank all of you parents for just putting your ch children in the care of the South Dakota School District. Because I know what it did for me. So I just say, you people just inspire. And these the students right here. I'm so happy to see them and the young lady in the back working. I always love to see the kids doing what they love to do. So thank you for the time and have a great evening. Thank you. That really illustrates the power of our alumni. And we are working to identify all of our alum alumni from all of the years. In fact, we have Mrs. Joyce Salazi. Stand up, Joyce. Get on the camera. So when this lady emails the alumni, please answer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, before we go on, I wanted to recognize Mayor Frank Rock, who is with us this evening, our partner from South Dakota. Stand up and be recognized. Glad you're here with us. On October 27th, from 11 to 2 p.m., at the Southfield Common, Southfield High Common, we will have our first annual Southfield Public Schools Health and Wellness Fair. Now, this is a fair that we put together that will support all of our students, preschool through 12th grade. We will have raffles and prizes, as well as information about health care, health screenings, um, they tell me that um, the hound will be there. Mm -hmm. Dr. Healthy Hound. Dr. Healthy <laughs> Hound will be there for the children, <laughs> as well as skin care, health care, everything about health and wellness for our students. We have a number of volunteers from the community um, that are just sharing their resources to come and to help our students. In addition, to put the fair together, we have our health instructors who have joined the steering team and are helping to steer this effort. And our health teachers are Rag Meg Bohikian, Mark Herstel, Mike Avery, Jennifer McClory, Willie Norwood, Ernie Tabor, Tyrone Character, Kelly Hill, Abby Tever, and Beth Lee. And they have met with us and will continue to meet with us and make sure that our agenda, our topics, and the folks that we have coming are on target for our young people. But more importantly, to help with the health and welfare of our students. So I want to say thank you to them this evening. I also want to do a shout out for <coughs> Diane Hopkins. She's our journalism teacher at Southfield High School. Well, let me correct that. Our award-winning journalism teacher at Southfield High School. And she has just won a free subscription to the Wall Street Journal for her class for the entire year. So we want to say thank you for our teachers for putting in that extra effort. She is the only teacher from Michigan to win this honor, and she was selected as one of 12 from all over the country. We also want to do a shout out this evening for McIntyre School. They have received first place in the 2012 City of Southfield Community Pride Award for their outstanding job in maintaining and beautifying the school. They will receive their award on October 15th at a ceremony with the mayor and city council. So we say congratulations to McIntyre. And with that, I will turn you over to my administration. Good evening. Um, the report to the administrative services can be found within the consent agenda this evening. Good evening. I have no additional report other than what's contained in the consent agenda and for the uh, report 5110. Thank you. Good evening. Well, I, I guess I will be sharing uh, a few items with you this evening, and thank you for allowing me for time. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to share with the board and also the community is to remind everyone that today is 
the first day of the MEEP uh, cycle. Uh, our MEEP testing begins today, or began today, and will be uh, moving forward for the next two weeks. So with that, we wish to remind our parents and we wish to remind our children that it's important to uh, wake up in the morning and get a little breakfast and to get to bed at night and get plenty of sleep. And also parents, just try and take a moment to talk with your parent, your students, uh, and your children rather, so that if they're having any little problem that we can help resolve that before they get to school and start testing. We want them to have a positive and confident attitude. So that's uh, one item that I wanted to share. The next item that I wanted to share is that uh, at the last board meeting, I presented to the board and to the community information about an upcoming assessment. I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. But I also wanted to move forward and provide more information for our parents so that they could really start to see what is this assessment about and also to find out more information about changes with their needs. So this Thursday, yes, this Thursday, October 11th, um, at University High School and also the following Thursday, October the 25th, we will be having an opportunity for our parents to learn more about this assessment and to learn more about uh, the changes that have occurred with our whole AYP and MEET evaluation system. So I look forward to as many of you that as possible can attend. We welcome you. And also flyers are being distributed at each of your buildings. And this is for K-12 parents. The next thing is I'd like to ask Mr. George Chapp and Alma Dean to come to the podium because they're going to provide more insight in terms of Saturday School. Good evening to members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Cabinet, and also to the community. Uh, I want to take a brief moment, I do mean brief, uh, just to go over our upcoming Saturday School offerings. Uh, it is that time of year again. Uh, you know, Southfield Public Schools in the last couple of years has built a dynamic and exciting program of everything from academic supports for our children K through 12, uh, to academic enrichment, uh, game, academic games, chess, uh, arts and crafts, sculpture, so on and so forth. But, so I just want to take a few moments to go and present that information uh, and how to register your child to attend Saturday school. <coughs> As I said before, we have two uh, areas that comprise Saturday school. Those that are academic labs and tutorial support that includes reading labs, mathematics labs, um, writing, um, and also we have enrichment programming such as rural languages, cartooning and animation, academic games, dance and acting, just to name a few. Uh, the academic labs cost for eight Saturday sessions is $50, and then for enrichment programming, the cost is $75. In terms of what is an academic lab, our reading labs focus on the strengthening and enhancing core reading skills, phonics, fluency, vocabulary. These programs are powered by Read 180, which is a nationally recognized research-based tool uh, with our partner Scholastic. Our writing labs focus on grammar skills building, usage, pre-writing, and construction, ideas and conventions. And this is not just for students that are struggling currently, this is for students that also want to accelerate their skills. And again, with our mathematics, Problem solving, computation, and understanding key concepts and strategies are at the center of these labs. We have very low student-teacher ratios, so there's a lot of time and attention that's dedicated to our students. In addition, we offer study and test-taking skills courses that help students focus on good practices like personal organization, time management, uh, as well as good strategies for test-taking. We also offer in our high school academic support labs, uh, homework support, and so on and so forth. On the other side, for our K-8 enrichment programming, we'll be offering this fall German, Mandarin Chinese, Spanish for world languages, and the areas of technology, web design courses, cartooning, uh, and in terms of academic reinforcement, again, for enrichment purposes, um, academic games, chess, Read 180 and speech courses. And in the arts and humanities, we offer art appreciation, dance, instrumental music, both band and orchestra, acting, jewelry making, sculpture, and vocal ensemble. Our registration.
registration for this fall K-8 Saturday school is going to be this upcoming Monday, October 15th. I'm sorry, hours of operation will be from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for the period one. All courses, both academic and, and, and enrichment, will be at Southfield High School. And we have two periods, one from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., and the second from 10 to 15 a.m. to 12 p.m. Again, we, these are eight Saturdays beginning October 20th, with the last session being December 15th. To learn more about Saturday school offerings offer <coughs> presented by the district, both for K and high school, you can always go to our website at www.southfield.k12.mi.us forward slash Saturday. Brochures have already been distributed and flyers distributed to school buildings. Uh, we already have information online detailing uh, course descriptions and fees. And our Saturday school registration will be located at Michigan First Credit Union. That will be located at the corner of Evergreen I-696. That will be on Monday, October 15th, 2012, from 12 p.m. until 6 p.m. And to learn, to learn any more information, you can contact the Division of Instruction. We have a specialized programs hotline. That number is at 248-746-4326. You can also email us at sbsprograms at southfield.k12.mi.us. From here, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Alma Dean, our Supervisor for Academic Achievement. She's going to talk about our district-based advanced play, uh, AP prep program. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I just want to take a few moments and um, explain to you our pilot program for the AP prep program at the district level. Our AP prep um, program, I should tell you, has three components, one at the classroom <coughs> level, one at the building, and Saturday is our district level AP prep um, experience. Saturday school, we have a nominal uh, fees and materials cost. The experiences are anchored in the contents of English, mathematics, science, and technology. This will also be eight Saturdays, an eight-week um, four-course rotation from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. with a 30-minute lunch break in between. We will also provide at least one field experience for each of the students. This is a sample of the rotation. Each um, grade cluster will experience all four rotation. So from K2, week one, they may be in science investigations, while third and fourth graders are in robotics, fifth and sixth graders may be in storytelling, and seventh and eighth grade may be in web design. Then weeks three and four, as you can see, K2 will experience robotics, third and fourth storytelling, fifth and sixth web design, seventh and eighth science investigations, and on and on. So each grade cluster will have an opportunity to experience all four um, course rotations. This is an example of the type of um, experience the children will have in the robotics class, for example. This particular um, activity allows the children to gather in teams of three or four, and with a bag of various materials, each team must use the materials to design a robotic, a working robotic arm and it has some particulars that are required for it, but eventually it should be able to pick up a styrofoam cup. And they're going to test it, analyze it, and see if it met the given criteria. So it should, and it will vary according to the age level of the student. This is a possible field experience, which would include a trip to the robot garage, which is located in um, Birmingham. This recently opened about a year ago and the students would have an opportunity to come there and work closely with leaders from the robotics and education community and have a hands-on experience to again work on some of these technical things that children their age otherwise may not be exposed to until they're, um, they're much older. Any questions concerning the AP prep program? Okay, thank you. Thank you. And that concludes my report. Okay, and now we'll have a uh, report from the uh, Head Start uh, from Ms. Smith.
<coughs> from the meeting held on Monday, October 8, 2012 at 9.30 a.m. Okay. Buffy is fully enrolled with 190 students. Uh, in order to operate, Head Start requires full enrollment. There are still 128 students on our waiting list. Buffy is fully staffed, which is important as well. Um, there were 936 breakfasts served in the month of September, 1,180 lunches, one, uh, and also 886 snacks. During the month of September, it was discovered that 10 students had not had vision screening, 27 students had not had hearing screenings, and 14 had not had dental screenings. Head Start provides an invaluable service to parents and the community by insisting on screenings for young children. How can we expect young learners to sit still with a toothache or to learn how to identify objects when they have vision problems that have gone unidentified? I think the village concept is a theme of the night. Um, Oakland County Health Department screened 20 to 25 four-year-olds Kids Project screened 22 three-year-olds for vision, and on October 22nd, Bright Smiles Dental will be um, doing dental screenings. Thank you to all of those community partners. Regarding average daily attendance, Head Start requires 85% ADA. Uh, the week of September 17th, there were 82% ADA. The week of September 24th, 76%. And the week of October 1st, 83%. The family service workers will investigate and follow up with Ms. Hill, and we as a district would like to maintain 85% or above for, he, uh, for Buffy Head Start. Uh, Ms. Hill talked about possibly offering incentives to parents. Within regard to improvement plans and actions, letter requesting extension to address the deficiencies was submitted to the region on September 28th. Fire Marshal, the Fire Marshal came to complete fire inspection. Currently, Mr. Gregory, Ms. Leslie Smith, and Ms. Hill are working on these issues. Regarding parents at Bussey, parent representative elections were held on Thursday, September 27th. Each classroom has two representatives. On October 18th of 2012, policy elections will be held. Parent orientation was held on Monday, September 10th and 12th, where 146 and 190 families attended respectively. Pedestrian safety training has already occurred. And that's important to mention because it has to be done within a certain period of time of the beginning of the school year. Also, Health and Service, the Health and Service Advisory Council, HSAC, met on September 27th. That was their first meeting. That also puts us in compliance regarding the 45 days of start of school. The plans are underway for a holistic fair on November 29th from 4.30 to 6.30 for parents offering different types of stress relievers, massages, snacks, yoga, yoga, and other things will be available. More info to come. Head Start Awareness Month uh, is the month of October, and um, Head Start Awareness Day was today at Bussy. And I believe Ms. Cass is going to share a little bit more with us about Head Start and why it's important for us to remember it this month. Okay, I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, paper dowels, if you look behind you, um, are, are visible. These are um, paper dowels done by our darling uh, Bussy students. You can also find them at Kroger on 12 and Evergreen, Uncle Joe's Chicken, Cadoba, Hellenic Coney, and as I mentioned, the JWE boardroom. To celebrate, today the Southfield Fire Department was on Bussy's campus with the fire truck. Southfield Police with coloring books and badges. Omnicare and Doc Bear were in the house. PNC Bank, Spider Man, which brought the house down from what I hear, <laughs> and guest readers and, and many more activities for the kids today. Finally, uh, upcoming events would be the field trip to the Blake's Apple Orchard on Thursday, October 11th, curriculum night, October 17th, 5 to 7 p.m., policy council elections, as I mentioned, October 18th, bring mom to school, October 24th and Celebrity Readers will start in November. With regard to the, the money, um, as you can see, the grant was $1.3 million. Our expenditure to date is $138,330.87, or 10.61% of our uh, budget. The balance remaining is $1.1 million, and there was an additional grant, as I mentioned last month, an award of $9,000 due to a federal bill for Head Start's cost of living increase. Last year's grant is uh, $1.2 million. 
relieved. That is all I have. Thank you very much. I covered just about everything. Uh, I did see the dolls at Kroger's. If you haven't been there yet, I suggest you go. It is really uplifting to see what our <coughs> kids have done uh, to the doll. They are funny. They are, uh, I don't know, sentimental, whatever you want to However you, however you want to look at them, they're just great. And uh, I'd like to remind you that our Head Start program is fully accredited by the National Association for the Education of Young Children, and they're seeking further accreditation. Um, uh, also, we have so many applicants for our Head Start program that they have submitted a request to Head Start for a larger grant. Yeah, to provide an extra classroom for all of those children on the waiting list. And we're hoping that they get the message. Uh, Ms. Hill is just doing a really good job. So thank you very much. That's it. Okay. That's it. Right. Uh, moving forward, uh, we get to unfinished business, which we have none. And uh, at this time, I'll take a motion to open and uh, approve the consent agenda. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Uh, are there any questions from the board? <coughs> Hearing none, uh, Ms. Secretary, would you please call for the vote? Yes. Trustee William? Yes. Trustee Hill? Yes. Myself? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. Vice President Katz? Yes. President Buchanan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And just like that, uh, we just paid our bills to the tune of about $8,100,000. So that's how quick that kind of money gets around here. Um, this time I'll take a motion to open it. Oh. Um, before we go on to the next report, uh, I'd just like to give David a turn an opportunity to make some comments about the personnel report. There was a little highlight there this year. Uh, Good evening again. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to point your attention to item 8311. You will see personnel actions for the initiation of hiring of uh, Akiva teachers who will participate in our shared time partnership that we have uh, consummated with Akiva. School. Um, again, this is uh, through many years of negotiations, at least three, uh, to get this uh, 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 program off the ground. This, this administration, this board, in partnership with the leadership of Akiva, have established this shared time program. And uh, we are servicing 224 students through their shared time uh, service program. And we will see, uh, obviously, student population and return of revenue as well as uh, teaching services given to those students who are serviced uh, through Akiva. So I did want to highlight that that program is well underway and uh, moving along through a lot of hard work on both sides of the table. So more information to come as we have other successes with other well. Thank you. Uh, and that's important to note because uh, you know, as this district is serving the entire community of South Hill and Lakeland Village, uh, we serve all of our uh, uh, community partners, including uh, the uh, Jewish schools as well as um, uh, any of the schools that need the services of the South Bend Public Schools. So um, we're reaching out to all of the community stakeholders and uh, this is just part of that initiative. So thank you uh, for your for your efforts that, uh, Mr. Turner. Okay, this time we'll take a motion to open and approve report fifty one ten, the supplemental staffing agreement. Thank you. Okay, so we moved and supported. Is there a background information? Yes, I'm gonna ask Ms. Pam Bard if she will go to the podium. <coughs> and this particular item refers to a student that I think the board had received emails about and the student that um, needed a nurse um, in order to participate fully in her educational class. Good evening, board. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening to the president and cabinet. We had a fortunate opportunity to return a student, one of our students, to Southfield. And as a result, we needed to put accommodations in place for her. So therefore, based on her IEP, we need the nursing services to address her health care management. And because of that, we, we saved on revenue in bringing her back. However, in this process, we interviewed several agencies. And this particular agency required, um, had the staffing available.
they were more flexible in adjusting their contract, and they also had a way to provide home orientation for the family as well. So with all those components, we felt that this particular agency had all the components that would meet the IEP and also address the student's needs. Also on top of that, the bid was considerably um, reasonable compared to the other agencies that were interested. Every agency Because of the low incident, I cannot really go into the, the particulars. No. But she would need the health care management. Care. She was one of the kids. She would need health care management every day. But because of student um, privacy, we cannot go into the specifics mm -hmm. of it in this meeting. Um, part because of the student record. I understand. So. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Thank you, Ms. Martin. Okay. Thank you. Um, if there are no further questions, uh, the Secretary, would you please call the vote? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. Myself? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. Vice President Katz? Yes. President Buchanan? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. This time I'll take a motion to open and approve Report 5111, the Northwest Educational Assessment. Yeah, we're going to ask Dr. Woods to give us some background. Absolutely. Um, the Northwest Educational Association and the Measurement of Academic Progress Assessment is a uh, assessment that we introduced to you um, last at the last board meeting along with our community. Uh, it's an assessment that is also uh, it measures the academic growth in the areas of English um, language and mathematics, or reading language and mathematics. Uh, we're, we would like to have this continually administered in grades 1 through 11 in our district. Um, and also it is an assessment that has been uh, entered into a collaborative or cooperative agreement with Oakland schools. Uh, in the county, this assessment is being used throughout as a form of measurement for academics as well as to use as a continual form of measurement for growth. And that is one of the key elements that will be a part of uh, many of our evaluations as we move into the future that the state is even looking at. This is a primary assessment for that. So um, that is the suggestion uh, that the state and the county is suggesting for us here and throughout the county. And we are recommending that the board approve the payment for this assessment. And this is a general fund expenditure. Any questions? This assessment is done up to four times a year. It is to help determine the growth of academic progress of our children. And this is unlike the MEEP, where the MEEP is only administered once in October. Um, and it's only administered, it is not tracking every child. Uh, in our district with the administration of this assessment, every child in grades 1 through 11 will be assessed to determine whether they are growing academically in the areas of reading, language, and mathematics throughout the course of this year. Yes? Uh, there's an $83,000 one-time payment? Yes, for the year. For the year. So per year, yes. That would be every year we that would that, that would be every year. Mm -hmm. And the cost has been reduced because of the cooperative agreement that Open Schools has entered in for every school district in our county. Yes, this is something that we don't have much choice about. The state is requiring that we track the academic progress of every student and be able to demonstrate that growth. So therefore, the, the test must be administered, you know, several at several assessment points throughout the year. And we don't have much choice. What's helped us here is that the entire county is using this. In fact, the tri-county area is using it. But at our superintendent's meeting, we had opportunities to review this. At, Lent, at Linda's Teaching and Learning Council where all the associates in curriculum have reviewed we did a lot of homework on selecting this assessment. It, is, it appears that it is the best thing that is out there at this time for us to use. Um, the cost, I, I have to tell you, when Linda came to me and told me the cost, um, 
I have a few answers after that. But it is a necessity. And we are in a high stakes test <coughs> environment in Michigan. And therefore, we have no option but to participate. Yes? Um, is it done during the school day or on a Saturday? Or Oh, no, it's, it's done during the school day. Mm -hmm. And children have, um, it's a flexible time, meaning they have enough time to complete it. It's not that they, it's time, they only have 30 minutes to complete it. So there's some fluidity there. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is something that uh, is very good for our parents, uh, our kids. And I really want parents to have an opportunity to learn about the assessment because what it does is children are provided a question at let's say the second grade level and if they are accelerating and they're doing very well they'll be challenged with a little higher uh, question. We're trying to find where the children are academically so that we can best provide the kind of strategic interventions academically to move them forward and to demonstrate that learning. Is it multiple choice, a mixture of? It's, a, it's multiple choice. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I'd just like to point out that when you give the beep, you give it to the, to the 10th grade every year, correct? We give it to the, the, the MEEP is given to grades 3 through 8. 3 through 8. Yes, and it's also given at the ninth grade, and it's also given in the Michigan Merit Exam is what is given to the 11th graders. So it's given to the same children every year? It's given to the same children. Provided that they're yes. the same children. Exactly. Every, every couple yes. of Yes, but it's not tracked the same way. That's right. Mm -hmm. So this tracks a child. Absolutely. 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 It's a whole more information. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely.
dynamics of it and hope that you will investigate it further. To my dismay, I have learned that I was lied to in history classes all through public school and, and on the university level. I even read for a blind law student in the early 1980s. And they do not study law in law school. They study what I call the legal arts. And I reference that as the black arts. No attorney today is allowed to uphold the law of the free republic. If such an attorney would dare do so, the Bar Association operatives in the hierarchy would come down on them with both feet. That's where the disciplinary action comes. But they're required to administer this private commercial jurisdiction that we're now operational under. I challenge people to review what an actual lawful and true history is. For example, we were told that the Civil War freed the slaves. I was never told in school that Missouri was a slave state, but it was a Union state. So the Emancipation Proclamation did not divest Missouri slaveholders of their property. The Revolutionary Era in the 1700s is quite obscured from full coverage in the history documentation in the curriculum because of who controlled our schools. And the reason why we don't study the genuine dynamics of the control of the money system is because those who control it do not us want us to understand how the, the people who control the monetary system and the banking system can take entire control of a nation. We are being set up. When we talk about fiscal restraints and we have to balance budgets and cut spending, what really is happening, we're just cutting more Americans out and cutting more Americans off. And Thank you, Mr. Milo. Thank you, Mr. Milo. You do you can just interrupt me in the middle of a sentence and not let me even finish the sentence. That's very rude. I've been sitting here for a whole hour listening this to... This is our meeting. This isn't your meeting, ma'am. So oh, I thought you serve is. the public, sir. Okay, and that's including everybody else here, yeah. not just you. So you give well, you you're, give a rude, you're a rude person, and you're setting a poor example for the next generation of people. Thank you very much. I'm trying to inform you, uh, and you don't want to be informed. What is 60? Uh, next, we have Derek and Lavanda uh, Atlas. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, again, Derek Atlas and LaWanda Atlas here on behalf of my son, McKaylee Washington. Uh, could, you you state your, could you state your name for the um, uh, your address? Derek address. Joseph Atlas, 23030 Christie Lane, South Bay, Michigan, 4033. Thank you, sir. Again, here on behalf of McKaylee Washington, uh, my son. He's now, luckily, uh, for, for all of us, the young black man who made it out of the inner city, and he's now attending. Alabama State University. So we're proud of that. He's an HBCU attendee. He's a graduate of Southfield High School, an extraordinary track and field athlete. He's a five time junior Olympic qualifier, a fourth place medalist in the 4x8, which exemplifies his potential. Uh, such a talent has been undercut because he was placed in the civics class at Southfield High School with an inefficient educator who didn't keep good records. Upon our knowing such, we met with principal and assistant principal and teacher resulting in agreed upon change of his grade from uh, FD to a B minus because of the unsubstantiated grades on behalf of the educator. Uh, the teacher, Ms. H, I'll call her, provided uh, change information to the counselor, Ms. Y, but failed to change his grade on Plato system, which we know generates the uh, official transcript. Um, we followed up with the principal, principal uh, who attempted to contact her via email and such to refuse to respond. We were forced to wait until the fall of the senior year she never did. Why is this important? We paid for him to go to Alabama State University because he was offered a scholarship and track and field partial. So this is very important to us. Um, however, the NCAA Clearinghouse, which is now uh, the governing board of all students, you can be as good as you want to be in whatever sport you want, but you have to have a specific course and a specific alignment. And it is supposed to be the job of the uh, council to facilitate such. Uh, first, we were found that the NCAA Clearinghouse rejected his application due to this one specific course. Uh, first, it was online. Why he was taking an online course during a regular school day, we have no idea. To me, that's absolutely ignorant. 
secondly, uh, when this information was provided to us through NCAA Clearinghouse, they requested for us to provide certain information. We contacted Ms. York, my wife, excuse me, my fault, Mrs. Y, and we specifically uh, itemized all the things that were to be provided as well as a deadline. She decided she was going to send them a note of whatever she wanted to. She attempted to address none of the itemized criteria that was required by NCAA Clearinghouse. Thus, the date passed. What we found out was, because of her inefficient movement, my son is now no longer eligible to participate, nor is he eligible to receive that scholarship. So we followed up once again with her, um, and the NCAA required certain information regarding the online course. Well, as a professional, uh, his educator, I'll use that word loosely, said specifically that, said specifically she couldn't provide the information, and Ms. Y uh, neither facilitated that uh, as well. So what we are finding ourselves in a situation that we have two people who didn't do their job and are costing us thousands. We're asking for an investigation, and we're asking that uh, the counselors in Southfield Public School be forced to undergo professional development so that they can have these students in alignment with the NCAA Clearinghouse. Mm -hmm. And at least we're asking for possible reimbursement for the tuition that he has lost due to the inefficiency of these so-called educators. Let me respond. Um, first of all, Thank you. first of all, the state of Michigan requires that all students take an online course prior to graduation. So, you know, if parents have issues with that, you know, let the state know as well because those requirements come from the state. You know, we're aware of this problem and we sympathize with you. It's my understanding Mr. Chap and Dr. Wood are working on this issue. In fact, they have talked with NC, NCCA today, and NCAA, thank you, and we'll be talking with them tomorrow. But we will be working with you to problem solve and resolve this issue. Now, it's my understanding that both Ms. Wood and Ms. Chat talked to you today. That didn't happen? But that didn't prevent us from coming here today. I understand that, but, I, but, yes, but <laughs> you, in your conversation, it sounds like the school district is doing nothing. Well, when they call us today, today three weeks. Well, no, we've been calling and then we've been working on no. this, okay? Not, Mr. Walker, I'm not going to argue occurred. with you. I know Mr. Chat and Dr. Wood will continue to work on this issue Appreciate and help to get it resolved. Yeah, no, but Appreciate the other it. issue about your feelings about online courses, that's not us. It. it should be for an elect, not a required course. Well, the Tell issue wasn't yes. that. The issue was well, she, had no she had no records. She had no records, and I'm as an educator, you. okay, sir, you have to have records. Sir, sir can, can we please, can we, I'm sure, can we please, you know, keep some decorum? Thank you. Uh, and yeah. so I'll pause it for the next one. Okay. We now come to board matters where the board can share information with the uh, community. Um, I think uh, uh, a lot of us have on, on our mind the uh, proposals that are going to uh, be on the ballot uh, next month. Uh, do any of you want to speak on that in particular? Do you want to speak on that? Okay. talk to you and your families, but my my urge is to certainly pay attention to circuit court judge elections, um, pay attention to judge elections in general, whether it's this year or in the future, because regardless of yeses or noes on proposals, those are the folks who interpret the law. So if you are in favor or not in favor of a certain proposal that passes, um, just pay attention to who's, who's going to interpret that law and, and vote accordingly. I might add that you, this ballot is very long, and you have to turn it over and pay attention to what's on the other side. That's where many of the judges are, and also the community colleges. The boards of the community colleges are very, very important. They're <coughs> more important today than they ever were because of the cost of college. Many of our students are going to community colleges for credit for their first two years, and then proceeding to the more expensive universities. So it's, it's really critical that we maintain high standards in these schools. And so please, please turn your ballot over and make an effort to find out who you're going to vote for. There are people in the community who are knowledgeable about community colleges if you want to talk to them. And, uh, and 
I could also mention that there are two vacant seats on the school board. And we are not allowed to speak on pro or con on any issue that's on the ballot, only to explain the issues. So that's about all I can say. But there are two seats on the school board, and I would urge you to vote for members of the school board. I, I, I don't want to say that the uh, seats are empty, but no, they're not empty. <laughs> they're filled. They will be. Uh, 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 their terms have expired, certainly. Right. Um, Mr. Lewis? Yes, I just would like to encourage the voters in Southfield Lakeville, Southfield Lakeville Village, and Southfield Township to be educated upon mm -hmm. the issues that mm -hmm. are going to be on the board, that could be on the ballot, sorry. Because there's more things at stake and just who we're going to select as President of the United States. Yes, that's important too, but we have to remember that local politics is also important. So it's important on who you choose to be your local leader in your community because it will be a great impact. So I just encourage the voters to educate themselves of what they're doing. Okay. The other All right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd like to take a moment to recognize Mr. Deegan's freshman class, civics class, from the University High School. I know David's still here, and I know David's got a lot of homework that he <laughs> probably needs to attend to tonight. Uh, but um, this is a classic, classic case, this particular board meeting, because. Uh, we're, this will be our last board meeting, public board meeting, before the election on Tuesday, November 6th. Mm -hmm. And what's important with uh, our student reps and our students throughout the Southfield Public School District is the fact that you were born with the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And a lot of members of this board and members of this community were not born with that opportunity. So they had to protest. They had to picket, they had to boycott, they had to march. They even lost their life mm -hmm. to give you the right to vote. So don't take it lightly. Uh, we expect a heavy turnout Tuesday, November 6th, a heavy turnout. Uh, polls open at 7 o'clock, they'll close at 8 p.m. If you're in line to vote by 8, you will be allowed to vote. Now, um, you can vote absentee. But what I want you to remember is the fact that uh, I, I took a recent trip a couple of summers ago to Africa. And when the South Africans got their right to vote, they had to walk a day to the polling station. They had to stay and stand at least a half day at best to vote. Then they had to walk another day to get back home. Rough hit right in the neighborhood. You can walk there, you can drive there, even if you have to stand a couple hours in line. Exercise your right to vote. That's important. The other thing I'd like to leave with you, uh, especially Mr. Deegan's class, is the fact that uh, there's probably six proposals in this upcoming election in addition to a number of judicial seats, uh, a number of <coughs> legislative seats, and of course the executive. And that's pretty much the, the branch of the government. Everyone will be represented on that ballot. Now you're too young right now to vote, but if you were eligible to vote, today would be your last day to register for this particular election. So um, don't take it lightly. You know, when you're born into something, you have a tendency to lose a sense of the importance of mm -hmm. that privilege to vote. But also understand it is your right to vote as well. Um, I'd like to also take this opportunity to congratulate the Southfield Lakers soccer team. Uh, they seem to be doing very well about now, and that's a, a global sport. So I'd, I'd like to extend a hearty congratulations to <coughs> because of the lateness of the hour, I won't, uh, I'll take my board matters for November, but um, I, I have to speak on this, and uh, 
I believe what's right is right, I believe what's wrong is wrong, and I believe that it's extremely wrong that there's been a malicious and vicious attack on my lawn sign for my re-election campaign. No, 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 no,